Matthew was an apostle, one of the 12 who followed Jesus. Um, he had a couple of different names, actually. In his book, he calls himself Matthew. But the other Gospels, if you know your Bible, and we went over this last week, especially the books of Mark and Luke, cover much of the same stories. Not exactly, but much of the same story of what Jesus did while he was on earth. And even John covers it in a little bit different way. In Luke and in Mark, he is called Levi. Now, why does he have two names? One is his Jewish name. He was Jewish, just like Jesus. And another is his Greek name. And sometimes in the Bible, this came up in our Bible study this morning. We have a Bible study at 8.30 if you want to come on Sundays. Um, this came up this morning. Sometimes Jesus renamed people, like he did that with Peter, but not the case with Matthew. This is probably, he probably had these two names before he ever met Jesus. Just like uh, some people today, especially Chinese people, might have a Chinese name and an English name. Why is that? Because for English speakers, many Chinese names are very hard to say. Interesting. This word, this name, Levi, we can say it quite easily, but Greek speakers don't have the letter V. This is just a really interesting uh, historical anecdote. They were dealing with stuff much like we are. They couldn't say the letter V. And so it was very hard to say Levi if you were a Greek speaker. So he, he named himself Matthew, which is, like, which is a very common Greek name. Matthias is actually what his name was, not Matthew. That's the English version of his name. What we know about him isn't a ton. Um, we know that he was a tax collector. That's clear in all of the Gospels. That was his job, and that meant that he was a collaborator with the enemy. Okay, the Romans were ruling Israel at this time. He was collecting taxes for the Romans, and so he was a traitor to his own people. So a way that you could imagine this is... A, Today, if someone were living in Gaza, but secretly working for the Israelis, that's what it would be like. Or the reverse, they were living in Israel, but secretly working for Hamas. That's what Matthew's job was like. And it's actually from that job that Jesus calls him to come and follow him. He was a traitor. Probably everybody hated him. The next thing you need to know about the book that he wrote, and this tells us a little bit about Matthew himself as well, is that this book, uh, it is the first book of the New Testament. So, you know, we went over this last week. The Bible is divided into the Old Testament, which is all of the Jewish books, right? And then it, the New Testament, which is also written, most of them, by Jewish people. But the New Testament is all about Jesus, and that's the dividing line, Jesus himself, Okay. Matthew is the most Jewish gospel. That's one of the reasons it is placed first in the New Testament, because it connects the Old and the New Testaments in some ways. What do I mean by it's the most Jewish gospel? What I mean is the way that Matthew writes, the things that he includes are very, very Jewish. He was probably writing to Jewish people initially, and it's actually possible there's a very early inscription or a very early uh, written statement that maybe Matthew wrote his gospel actually in Hebrew or Aramaic before he wrote it in Greek. We don't know that that's uh, for sure the case, but at the very least, the way that it's written in Greek, in the original language that we have it in, is very Jewish in character. It's written in sort of a Jewish style Greek. Interesting fact about it. Also, there are lots of little pieces, and we'll touch on some of these as we go through it. Um, one little piece would be, in many of the Gospels, we find Jesus talking about the kingdom of God, right? The kingdom of God. In Matthew, Jesus almost never says kingdom of God. What does he say in Matthew? Does any, any Bible scholars, anybody know? What does he say instead of kingdom of God? In the book of Matthew, Jesus almost always says kingdom of heaven. Or in fact, in the Greek, it's plural, kingdom of the heavens. The reason is Jewish people don't write down the name of God. They don't write down God. Even today, many Jewish people, Jewish authors will write G-D and not actually write out the name of God because they're trying not to break the commandment, to misuse 
maybe even by accident, the name of God. So Matthew is clearly has that in mind as he writes his gospel. Very interesting. Jesus probably said both these things. He probably said kingdom of God, and he probably said kingdom of heaven or of the heavens, which is another Jewish way of speaking. There are lots of other Jewish pieces in the gospel. Matthew clearly knew his Old Testament better than any other, maybe except for the Apostle Paul, better than anybody else who wrote in the New Testament, or knew his Old Testament better than anyone else who wrote in the New Testament. 